It is militarism run stark mad. So an American diplomat describes Europe in the spring of 1914, when Europe is officially at peace. In Imperial Germany, a huge peacetime army is drilled and inspired by the tradition of Prussian arms. Farm boys and gymnasium graduates serving their three-year hitch. Sons of impoverished Junker families making a career of the army, all preparing for their tag. The day when, in the words of their commander-in-chief, this business will have to be settled once and for all. The business of France. France, resurrecting her army from an old disgrace, 1871. Defeat in the Franco-Prussian War. 1913, a new three-year draft law. The recruit, once a figure of ridicule, becomes the embodiment of France's mission. In the long-remembered words of author-patriot Victor Hugo, to nourish her sacred anger, to become again a great France, the France of an idea with a sword. Then she will be irresistible, and then she will take back Alsace-Lorraine. In 1914, the enemies face each other with armies three times as large as the last time. One of the generals fears the war will not be decided by a single battle, not until the whole strength of a people is broken. Yet the plans of the generals on both sides are staked on that single battle. prestige of Prussian arms, the prestige of the Kaiser himself, Wilhelm II. A military buff hiding a deformed left arm in a vast wardrobe of uniforms, he likes the company of military men, the general staff. To them, he has entrusted great influence over national policy. One becomes chancellor, calls diplomacy nonsense. By 1914, Germany is flanked by an alliance that diplomacy might have prevented, Russia and France. The Kaiser is left with Austria and the strategy of the general staff. Its chief, General Helmut von Moltke, a man who says of himself, I am too reflective, I lack the capacity for risking all on a single throw. Yet his predecessor, General Alfred von Schlieffen, has committed Germany to exactly this. Build no more fortresses, build railroads. This is German gospel under the Schlieffen plan. Germany must be ready to strike more quickly than her enemies when the day comes. The annual war games, which used to end with the annual capture of the enemy by the Kaiser's side, are now conducted more realistically with the Kaiser on the sidelines at Moltke's insistence. the Kaiser says, lies in being ready for war at a second's notice. Ready since 1905 with the Schlieffen plan. A plan for victory in a two-front war. The East Front can wait. Ponderous Russia will take weeks to move. Meanwhile in the West, the mass of the German army will be hurled against France in a single sweeping action, a battle of decision. France knowing the day will come, has a plan of its own. Plan 17, cut off the German drive by way of Alsace-Lorraine. Plan 17, a mystique rather than a strategy. It is Victor Hugo's vision of France en route back to its lost provinces, of France irresistible, but with more idea than sword. The idea of Elan, a spirit of ardor and impetuousness expressed in simple, inspiring maxims. Offensive to the limit, 
Whatever the circumstances, attack. France's army has been entrusted to the command of General Joseph Joffre, a slow-moving man of tremendous resolve and inflexible routine. A heavy bourgeois lunch and then a nap, whatever the circumstances. The ardor in his command is supplied by General Noel de Castelnau, his fiery chief of staff, and by General Ferdinand Foch, the leading exponent of Elan. Victory is willpower, Foch has written. Under such mottos, France faces Germany when the day comes, on August 1st, 1914. The day brought on by an Austrian mishap at a town called Sarajevo. The day the fateful clockwork of the Schlieffen plan moves from crisis to mobilization to war. neutral Belgium, swords and lances, sun glinting on metal breastplates, smell of leather strong in the summer heat. They are the advance guard of five armies, one million men, deployed to the border by railroad, by the Schlieffen plan. of the Belgian border will prove a diplomatic disaster. But diplomacy must give way to strategy, to the plans of the general staff. Belgium is the route into France, the route of the strong right wing with which Schlieffen planned to circle behind the French armies and envelop them in his single massive sweep. Six weeks to Paris in victory. On his deathbed two years before, Schlieffen is supposed to have murmured, keep the right wing strong. The first roadblock in the German path is the fortress city of Liège, an industrial center with a bristling hedge of guns and concrete. Volker's armies try to take it by storm. after appalling losses fails to dent the Belgian forts, German firepower takes over. Siege guns like nothing seen or felt in war before. Squat monsters from Austria's Skoda munitions works brought up in three motor-driven sections with their Austrian crews. Guns from the Krupp works in Germany requiring 200 attendants and firing shells a yard long. It will be a war of terror weapons. After 12 days of punishment, the defenses of Liège collapsed. 